All right, hello everybody and uh, welcome to Fanshawe's virtual open house. My name is Connor and uh, I work in the reputation and brand management department here at Fanshawe. Hopefully you've had a wonderful open house experience so far or if this is your very first session, welcome. We're super excited to have you. Uh, I will be the host for today's session uh, and just wanted to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items before we get started. Tal, could you switch to the next slide please and thanks. So just a couple of instructions for our session again, before we get started, your webcams and mics as attendees will be turned completely off for this session. So no one will be able to see or hear you. Uh, but if you wanna ask a question, we do ask that you use the Q and A feature, which is down, should be at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions for the session. Uh, we are gonna do our best to cover all questions, uh, bearing in mind the time, we'll try to get through them. Uh, but if you didn't get a chance to have your question answered, or if you maybe wanna ask something after the session about another topic or this one, uh, send us an email to that email you see on the screen, myfuture@fanshawc.ca. I'll also post it in the chat later on so that everybody will have access to it. So uh, I just want to formally introduce Jason, Melissa, and Tal. If you guys want to turn your uh, videos on and uh, unmute yourselves, uh, they'll be taking over the session and I will be back for the live Q&A portion. So take it away, guys. Thanks so much. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tao Dishman. I'm a pre-admission advisor at Fanshawe College. Joining me today with Melissa and Jason, I'll let them introduce themselves to you guys. Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Get those questions ready. We're happy to help. <laughs> Perfect. All right, without further ado, let's start our session then. So all three of us, we are a uh, admission advisor, pathway advisor at Fanshawe. So what we do here is we can help you with um, discuss your program information, um, any admission requirement, or help you with any application process. If you want to know how to apply to Fanshawe, or if you're looking to transfer um, pathway within Fanshawe, or to a different college or university at, um, after graduating at Fanshawe. So um, if you're interested in meeting with one of us, the um, admission advi pathway advisor, you can book one-on-one -on -one phone appointment, unfortunately. At this point right now, we only offer phone um, advising appointments. So you can book online at the web address showing there, which is www.fanchalc.ca forward slash book now, or you can call us at 519-452-4277. And one of our customer representatives will be happy to help you book an appointment or if you have a quick questions, need something for confirmation, you can always email us at advising at fanchalc.ca as well. So first things first, um, if you, now that you're looking to start a college, but you need help picking out a program, there's a lot of program that we offer at Fanshawe. We do offer um, these two very interesting tools, which is the first one is Fanshawe Pathfinder that you can click on that link there that can kind of help you, um, you know, um, narrow down your options or explore other options. Or the other one is called Fanshawe Career Coach. They're both a quick and free assessment tool that can help you determine program that is more suitable for you or might help you narrow down your options or explore some option that you might not have um, considered before. So the first one is Pathfinder. So when you log in on Pathfinder result, Pathfinder is a set of about 25 questions to kind of help you identify your personality types based on um, Holland and Code theories that each personality types match well with different work or college program environment. So logically, therefore, you are most likely to be successful or satisfying if you choose a program or um, career that match your personality type. So the Pathfinder assessment can help you explore and narrow down some of the career options that you may already have in mind or that you may not have never considered them before. So after you complete the assessment, you will be taken to this result that show this lovely colorful um, graph here. And you will be, um, the result will show you top three personality traits. So the result of the career or the program will be kind of based on the top three of your personality trait here. So after you um, see your Pathfinder result, it will take you to what's called Career Guide, which is kind of based on each of the program that we have at Fanshawe. 
each career guides will kind of show you the more information about each career that kind of awaits after you graduate from the program, either the working condition or, you know, the places that hire these type of positions or the task or job duty that you will be doing in this career. Also, the program workload level so that when you get started at the college, you know what kind of commitment or workload that is expecting of you or any academic skill that needed to be successful in the program or any future development opportunities that um, you can do after graduating. All right, another assessment that we just talked about is um, career coach. So career coach is you can browse by taking an assessment or you can browse by the career or you can browse by program. So if you do the assessment, the assessment you have the options of either doing um, one is um, short assessment of about six questions or a more detailed one that is about 60 questions. It might sound long, however, you just only answer agree, unsure, disagree, um, and you kind of answer without thinking much into it because we want something that come up to mind um, for you to answer those questions so it can go very quickly. And after you complete the assessment, the result will show you your top three personality traits kind of similar to the Pathfinder assessment and your top career matches for you to review. So the neat thing about the career coach is that once you um, complete the assessment and you click to review each career, it will take you to a page for each career kind of similar to this, which kind of provide you more information in depth of the median salary, current employment, or you can even view live um, actual job posting kind of based on the selected regions so that you have a better idea whether the career is in demand on the air for the area that you live in or you're thinking of moving of moving to after graduating. So now that we kind of ran around your options, you have some idea of what um, program you would like to apply at Fanshawe. You can apply through Fanshawe through ontariocolleges.ca. So everyone of, uh, in Ontario for domestic applicants will have to apply through ontariocolleges.ca. Application for the following fall term opens in October every year. Right now it is open for fall 2022 application already. We encourage all applicants to apply before February 1st. It is a consideration, equal consideration deadline because after this date, some of the program that is are competitive may be already be closed or after that it's come as first come first serve. So after this date, um, if you would like to apply to other program, you can check on our website to review the list of all open programs. So now the process of applying, and this will apply for only domestic students, um, international student, the process will be different. So when you apply and create your application at ontariocolleges.ca, there's an application fee of $95 payable to them. Um, you will be allowed five program choices. You can pick three maximum from Fanshawe, um, and you will have the option to send transcript directly to Ontario colleges if you've been to high school or any college or um, university in Ontario, you may, they may have an option for you to request electronic transcript right on your application. So if you're thinking of, I don't wanna wait until fall 2022, that's too long, I want to start college now. There's still a lot of program that we still have it open for this coming January or the summer semester in May as well. So you can view the list of all the current program that's still open at www.fanchalc.ca forward slash open. It will break down into semester of these are the list of the program that are still open for the January. These are the list of the program that's still open for the um, summer term. So now the questions um, talk about a highly competitive program. So I'm not sure if anyone kind of noticed the theme of this list of competitive programs here, that the theme is majority of them are health career programs. So a lot of these programs are highly competitive, meaning that we actually have, we actually have um, more eligible applicant apply, which is more than a number of seats that we can actually accommodate. So um, with these programs, usually it will be closed by February 1st. So we always encourage students 
um, to apply before February 1st, especially if you are applying to these competitive programs. So if you're considering applying for these type of programs, um, we always recommend booking an appointment to speak with one of the advisor um, because there's a lot to discuss about. Um, when it comes to these competitive programs, eligibility does not guarantee admission. So we can discuss any correct selection criteria or minimum grade required to help make your applicant to be competitive when you apply to these programs. So now the big question here, admission requirements. So to be eligible for the program, you have to meet admission requirements. So every program has different admission requirements. Some program may require English, some re program require math, some program require science. So, um, and some program might even have minimum grade required. So some, so some of these, just a passing grade may not be enough for you to be eligible for the, um, for the admissions. So we encourage you to visit our website, college website for each of the program page. There will be admission requirement listed under admissions requirement tab. If you have any question, you can always contact us and we can clarify any question that you may have. So when you apply, we always encourage students to send in college or university transcript because you may receive extra consideration if you have post-secondary education, especially it's, these are the most important when you apply for competitive program that we just discussed as well. So if you don't have any admission requirement or you're still currently upgrading um, for some of these courses, maybe you miss math requirement or you're still currently completing high school for some of these courses that is required for your program. When you apply, as long as the program is still open and you submit um, proof of enrollment that's showing that you are currently enrolled in these courses, you may be eligible for the conditional offer. So just like I mentioned, if you're missing any of the admission requirement, talk to us, make an appointment to talk to us to discuss some of our upgrading options. The first option is um, an upgrading through us, through academic upgrading. Um, we offer our ACE program. It is completely free. Um, our ACE program is an equivalent to uh, grade 12 equivalency for the purpose of gaining admission to colleges. Another alternative options would be, um, for example, for adult learning um, center, for example, for in London, we do have Weibo Centers for Lifelong Learning or Independent Learning Center that you can take individual courses um, to be eligible for a program at Fanshawe. Or another option is our Fanshawe Preparatory Program. These are especially important if you are looking to apply for a competitive program and does not have course of your education, or you may be, you do, however, your grade may not be competitive enough. So some of these preparatory program will be a designated program pathway in order to help you be competitive when you apply for competitive program. Another thing is our prior learning assessment and recognition or PLAR. As an adult learner, you may have gained some valuable experience and skill from these type of experience, work experience, volunteer activity, military experience, something like that. Um, the plot process help recognizing these experientials and or non-formal learnings um, for the purpose of obtaining academic credits. It might, it will not help you get into the program. However, it will help you obtaining the credit that you may have great, um, you know, learn through these um, non-formal learning experience. So our advisor in the advising center can help you facilitate the process and apply for PLAR. If you're thinking of transferring to Fanshawe, let's say you start your education at a different college or university for a similar or the same program, and you're thinking of transferring to finish your um, education at Fanshawe, you may be eligible to do so through a couple of these options. The first one is through external credit, meaning that you have complete some courses or credit at different institutions at a different post-secondary education, and you would like to transfer those credit to become a credit at Fanshawe. Um, or another one is um, advanced standing, that um, if you're looking to transfer into a semester that is higher than second semester, so maybe um, second semester level one, two, three, or four, typically 
Um, we review advanced standing applicant. Um, we review it course by courses basis. However, if we have any articulation agreement with your previous institutions, we may be able to accept a block of semester credit depending on the program or the agreement details. For example, a lot of our business diploma are pretty much all equal and created kind of same curriculum um, with other colleges in Ontario. So another one is a pathway, um, program pathway and transfer. So you can, uh, we can help you explore options to further your education after graduating from Fanshawe program so that you can take your academic credit with you when you move to a new program, either within Fanshawe or at a different institutions. So the first one would be our pathway database, which is on the link on there. Um, so if you click that we base on each program at Fanshawe, that show kind of detail of whether you can transfer to a different program to further your education within Fanshawe or to another institution to maybe um, pursue your degree. Um, if, you, uh, if you're interested in institutions or um, program that's not listed on the database, um, on transfer.ca is also another free um, resource that help you connect to your transfer opportunities within Ontario, or you can con contact the institution of your choice directly to inquire about the transfer. So now we have come to the end of um, our presentation. Um, if you have any more information on this topic, you can always welcome to email us at advising at fanchalc.ca or book an appointment with us and we will, will be happy to help you with any question that you may have. Connor, over to you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tal. That was incredibly informative, and we really appreciate you taking the time to explain all about choosing and applying to your program. So I am getting a couple of questions in here that I'm going to be asking the three of you. Uh, the first one that I have here is, are you able to join one program and take courses from another? For example, if I take a motor sorry, a motive power program, but I add a culinary foods and nutrition course or some other unrelated course of interest. So I'll, I'll answer this first one. So you can, um, however, uh, before adding in any extra course, I always encourage students to, you know, try in on the first week of that program first because full-time study is, is a heavy workload. So, but if you, you can always add a different um, courses um, on top of your study, if you think you are able to handle it, of course, with an extra fee. Perfect, thanks so much, Tal. Uh, the next question that I have here is, uh, it's about the $250 non-refundable deposit. Can you just explain a little bit more about what that's for? Sure, I can take that one. Um, so the, for September start, the $250 deposit is due by June 15th. And what that does is it basically locks in your spot. It tells us that you are going to be a student and it allows you to start to access our student services. Um, it's non-refundable. So if you change your mind, uh, unfortunately it has to stay with us. Um, but it, it basically tells us, yeah, you're, you're coming, you're, you're locked in yourself. Um, and then you can access counseling accessibility services. You can access uh, different different areas that you wouldn't be able to access without paying that fee. Great, thanks so much, Jason. Uh, another question that I have here are, what are your personal favorite programs? Oh, I think you might be muted. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Melissa, I couldn't hear you there for a quick second. Still no, can't hear you. No, I'm still not getting you. There might be something going on with either your headset or maybe your computer mic. I can take that for you, Melissa. That's no problem. <laughs> Get your technology <laughs> figured out. <laughs> uh, we don't really have any personal favorite programs. Um, we can't advise you on what program to take. We can work with you to narrow things down and find the best fit. We can use the tools that Tal referred to, like the Pathfinder Career Guide, uh, Career Coach. Um, we can also refer you to our community employment services. And um, 
they're Employment Ontario funded, so the services are free of charge, and they can do a little more career exploration with you as well. As far as our most popularly addressed programs, um, right now it seems to be the competitive health programs, people getting ready to apply by February 1st and wondering, you know, how competitive they are. But as far as our most, you know, popular, we can talk to, talk to you about, but preferred, no. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jason. Uh, next question is, how do you know if the program that you are interested in is a competitive program or not? I'll take this one. So um, when you review um, the program page, um, each program page will kind of show on top that a little disclaimer that, hey, this program is um, competitive programs um, so that it will give you a link. So or you can always um, review the link that um, previously it's um, www fanchelsea.ca forward slash HCP, which is short for highly competitive program. It will show you the list of all these competitive programs from the past year, and also the minimum grade and all the selection criteria that we kind of look at when we review the application. That's kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what um, we kind of expecting for the successful applicant to have in order to gain admission to these programs. And remember, it's also on the program page. Um, if you go to admission requirements, there's a gray box that usually says this program is highly competitive. Um, and then for more details, yeah, go to the highly competitive program page like Tal mentioned. Great, thanks to both of you. Uh, next question that I have is, do you need a transcript when you're applying straight out of high school? Yes. Um, in order for us to assess your eligibility, we definitely need a transcript. Whether it's done or not, something in progress is at least something to look at. Um, and then you could be eligible for what we consider to be a conditional offer. If we can see that you're scheduled to complete high school by you know, three weeks before the start of class in September, um, then we can at least say, yep, we'll assume that's going to be done. And then if we see that you've, you're registered in like a required math or an English, we can also assume that'll be done and then extend a conditional offer. If that's the case, you also have to talk to your guidance counselor about getting a completed transcript into us as soon as possible. And that can go to Ontario colleges and then they'll send it to us. And then we can reassess if everything's done and looks good, we can remove the condition and change that to a full offer. Awesome, thanks Jason. Uh, just on to remind everybody again uh, on this meeting that if you wanna ask a question, then you can use the Q&A feature, uh, which should be at the very bottom of your screen. Uh, feel free to click on that and ask away. Uh, otherwise, we've got a couple more coming in here. Uh, the next question that I have is, are there any online courses available? And maybe I'll add to this uh, and just maybe follow up and say, how do I uh, find that list or where do I go to access those? So um, you mean online, like the program that offer in a fully online format? Is that kind of the questions? Because- Sure, yeah, yeah. we can go with okay. a fully online. Yeah, okay. yeah. So if so, when you review um, online, so on the college website, you can actually search, um, there's a menu called, I believe, program and courses. There'll be, if you click on that, there'll be a drop down menu. And there's also, um, there's, I think, I believe there's an options to click um, online learning, distant learning. I don't remember exact words, and it will show all the online courses. That's kind of break down into a full program, like a full-time program, and also maybe continuing education or part-time program. Or if there's a program that you have in mind that you're interested in, if you click on the program page, on the right side of the program page, it will show different intakes that, hey, this is one for fall, this one for January, this one for, you know, summer term. And then the campus locations, if it's online, it will say London or any area campuses and it will have a word online right next to it. That will be a fully online program. Okay, thank you so much, Tal. Uh, next question we have here is, does Fanshawe give extra grades for people who took university slash mixed <laughs> courses throughout high school? No, sorry. Um, 
when you're looking at the admission requirements, you'll see either or college level science uh, call or university level science. We don't give additional consideration to that. Other schools do, and we're aware of that. Um, but we, we are saying that the minimum requirement for a case like that would be a grade 11 college level biology. That will give you the foundation you need to be successful, but obviously we'll accept a higher level, but uh, no additional um, um, points or anything are given for that, unfortunately. Okay, thanks, Jason. Uh, next question here is, do you accept private college credentials? I'll answer no, this I'll one. <laughs> yeah, I'll answer this one. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Um, then because the, it is because they are non-accredited. Um, if you take any um, ed previous education at private college, it's 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 kind of flat out across the board. The answer is no. You may be eligible to transfer maybe an English credit if if it seems like an equate to what we have at Fanshawe, but that's that's. Unfortunately, that's pretty much it. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, next question here. Does being on the honor roll in high school help give me a better chance of getting into Fanshawe? Um, well, yes, it does, but not because of the title of being on the honor roll. Um, being on the honor roll would mean that your grades are higher. And because of that, yes, that would definitely make you a stronger applicant. Um, but for the majority of our programs, we look at strictly the academics that come in on your transcript. There's a couple that might, you know, want to see a resume. Those are very specific courses and programs. Um, and it would say that in the, um, on the program page under the admission requirements. But for the most part, it's strictly academics. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, our next question, do you help international students with visas? In the situation where a visa is refused, do you fully refund? It is something that I would probably refer them to contact our international office or the agent that they have been working with because every situation is different, especially when it comes to um, immigrations, um, restriction and everything. It's we. Three of us are pre-admission advisor for mainly domestic students. So if international applicant looking to apply at Fanshawe, I would encourage them to contact their own agent or um, international office to make sure that um, you know, all the aspects of their immigration or any financials are being looked after you know, you know, by an expert. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, our next question here. Uh, where can I start applying to Fanshawe and what is the cost of doing so? Um, so all applications go through Ontario Colleges. So that's www.ontariocolleges.ca. You can go straight there and start applying. If you're on a program page, you'll see a button that says apply now. That will just direct you right to Ontario Colleges as well. Uh, it's a $95 application fee and you can apply to up to five different colleges or if you've got three programs in mind, you can apply it up to three programs at Fanshawe College or any one college. And, and that application fee will cover you for an entire application cycle. So if you're applying for next September, if you want, you're covered for January of 2023 and the summer of 2023 as well. That's that cycle. If you apply for summer this year, and then want to apply for September. Unfortunately, those are two different cycles and you'll have to pay the application fee twice. Okay, thanks, Jason. Uh, our next question here, is it fine if I only apply to Fanshawe? And I'm going to assume just by reading the question that they aren't applying to any other universities or colleges. So just exclusively to Fanshawe. Yes, you, you can. You can apply up to, like this and said, up to five program and then three from one of the same college. So it, it's as long as you can apply to one program, if you for sure that this is the program you would like to go with, um, there's no, there's nothing discrepancy with that. If you are looking to apply for college, it will be a different um, application site. It's called OUAC. And that is something you probably have to inquire with them. Like let's say with our nursing, collaborative nursing program, because it's a collaborative nursing with them, um, um, UWO, Western University. So you would apply through OUF, not Ontario colleges last year. I mean, the smart move is to apply to Fanshawe only. 
but <laughs> we've got other options. And uh, the other thing too that comes up is um, you have the option of ranking your options that you apply to on Ontario colleges. And don't sweat that. We don't look at that. We assess each of your application individually. They're mutually exclusive. So we can give, um, a, if you apply to three programs, we could give you um, admission to all three. But don't worry about you know, thinking, you know, which one do I want first? If you're applying to a health program straight out of high school, it's very tough to get into without post-secondary. So I always say as a plan B, add pre-health science as well. Great, thanks guys. Uh, next question here. Uh, I know that the requirements vary for different programs. However, I noticed that a grade 12 English is required for most. Is there a standard grade requirement or does it just vary from course to course and other grades? Okay, I'll take this one. So um, if there is no minimum grade indicated under the admission requirement, it means that we accept passing grade, which means 50 unless there are some courses um, that indicate, like it will indicate pretty much right on there that you need minimum 60, you need minimum 75 or 70. So um, in order to be eligible, aside from having the credit for those courses, you still need to meet the minimum grade required. Again, though, with the minimum grade required when it comes to a competitive program, being eligible by meeting minimum grade is not guaranteed admission. So, if you're thinking of applying competitive program, um, review the competitive program page or you know, get in touch with one of us. We can help you so that you know what is expected. Just take the time, read the admission requirements on the program page. It's pretty, it's pretty specific, it's laid out pretty well. Um, but like Tal said, if there's no grade indicated, then a passing grade will be fine, but be careful to read all of the admission requirements because occasionally at the end in brackets, it'll say minimum grade of 65 and all the above courses. Be careful with that. Or call us, Get a, make an appointment with us. We'll walk you through it. Uh, I'm getting a general question here about the waitlist process and what that looks like at Fanshawe. Uh, okay, I can take that for, for us. Uh, so the waitlist, basically how that works is once we receive all the applications, and we don't really start looking at them until after February 1st, if you've applied for September 2022, what we'll do is we'll send out enough offers to fill the program to the top applicants. And then what we'll also do is create a wait list, and then we'll send out wait list offers to those individuals. It could be a, a good number, it could be a small number, it all depends on all the stats we have from previous years. So what you would do is you'd uh, accept your waitlist offer and you accept that on your web advisor. That does not go to Ontario colleges. Once you accept it, then you're placed on the waitlist in the order that you have applied. And you'll sit there until we call you basically. Uh, on your web advisor, we also tell you basically your, your range. We can't tell you the exact number because the waitlist is pretty fluid. Um, but we'll let you know if you're between 1 and 10 or 11 and 20, just so you have an idea of where you, where you sit. Um, we don't usually start calling people off the wait list until a couple of things have happened. Firstly is the May 1st deadline to confirm offers. So if people we've sent a full offer to haven't confirmed, then we can start maybe looking at calling off of the wait list at that point and cancel their offers. The other big date is the June 15th deadline to pay your $250 deposit. We don't hear from the people we've sent out full offers to. We can um, take, take away their offers and then start to call off of the wait list again. Some programs, the wait list we call deep into. Others, we don't call on the wait list very often, such as um, dental hygiene is only like 30 spots. And usually if people get an offer to dental hygiene, they hang on to them. Um, I hope that helps. I was rambling a bit there. Sorry. Um, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was great. Thanks so much, Jason. Uh, next question here is from someone that is a Canadian, uh, but they went to school in a different country and they completed their high school there. Will their high school diploma still be valid if applying to Fanshawe, I'm assuming? Okay, so I can take this one. So what we do at Fanshawe, um, so we can assess transcript. Um, international transcripts especially, um, we don't need uh, 
Credential Assessment Services. Um, there are a couple of them out there called ICAS or WES. Those um, cost money. So as long as your transcript is in English or translated by a certified translator in English, we do have our own Bible to kind of compare to see what's the equivalency of the Canadian, uh, of the Canadian equivalency um, for the purpose of admission at Fanshawe. Let's just be, be careful because math is math. Science is usually science. It's pretty specific or pretty common. But the one thing, um, if you have an international transcript, probably you're still going to need to do an English proficiency um, examination as well. Great. Uh, our next question here is just about how to access uh, your transcript and what the best way to go about that is. Okay. Uh, well, it depends. Uh, if your transcript is from back home in a different country, that could be very difficult, especially if it's a, you know, a war-torn country or it was 35 years ago and the school doesn't exist. Um, that's a different story. Um, but as far as domestically, um, usually I recommend getting in touch. If you're a current student, guidance counselor. If you are a high school graduate, uh, go to the school board. Uh, last I heard, the school boards keep transcripts for about 75 years, so they're going to be there. You can call or um, a lot of them have the transcript request on their website to do that as well. Um, and that will range anywhere from, you know, 15 bucks to 25 or 30 bucks. Um, and then you can have that sent to Ontario colleges. Now, when you're applying, there is the option of requesting your transcript on the application when you get to the payment screen. And um, you just put in your high school, your name. If you've got your OEN number, your Ontario education number, you can put that in there as well. And OCAS will request your transcript electronically on your behalf. So you don't have to touch it. It just goes right to them. It's fast. They input everything and then send to us. And OCAS only charges you what the school board would, would charge. So that's very easy. Not all schools are on there and Ontario schools only as far as I know. Okay, great, thank you so much. Uh, next question that I have here uh, is generally just about submitting documents, if you just wanna to touch on that a little bit and uh, maybe just some general tips and tricks on what a student would need to do in that case. Okay, um, I, I can take this one. So aside from what Jason said that um, to request transcript, that should be an options on your application if your colleges are, or high school are in Ontario and they do offer this electronic um, options. If not, um, let's say if you have transcript from our province or your transcript is an international transcript. So typically you would have this in a PDF format and you after you apply on Ontario colleges, um, you can send in your transcript to our um, email inbox that we use solely for receiving documents, which is called Red Forms at fanshawc.ca um, with your full name and application number. That way it can be attached to your application at Fanshawe College. Um, if you apply for other colleges as well, you might have to inquire with them or you may have to send your documents directly to um, Ontario colleges. And I'm just putting that uh, link in the chat for you there guys as well, because it's a weird name. Um, <laughs> There you go. I should have spelled that out. Sorry about that. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much. Uh, next question that we have here is, if I worked in the field of the course that I want to take, should I write about it in my application? Uh, you can, but unfortunately, again, it's just academics. But the advantage that you have is something called PLAR, which is Prior Learning and Assessment Recognition. And what that allows you to do is challenge individual courses in the program, um, whether it's a challenge exam that you write or a portfolio that you might have to submit, say, for a field placement. But you can definitely take advantage, excellent advantage, of your past experience, your work experience. Um, and it's $105 per course that you want to challenge. You just let us know you want to challenge it. We'll send you the course outline. And if there's a learner guide associated with it, we'll send that to you as well. Um, and then once you pay the, the fee, we let the, the program coordinator know, they get in touch with you for the exam, set it up, you write it. You pass, you get credit. It doesn't show that you've done it through PLAR on your transcript. So if you're worried about employers seeing that, don't worry, you just get the grade, whether it's a pass fail or a letter grade. And then if it's a portfolio, you submit to us after you pay, and then we forward it on to the assessor. 
Um, you can do that for up to 75% of the program if you like. Um, you have to do 25% of any program at Fanshawe to get a credential from us. And if you do eight or more, it's a flat rate of 750. Great, thanks, Jason, that's super helpful. Uh, next question that I'm having here is about uh, international credentials and if an evaluation would be required for that. Again, as Maya mentioned before, we don't really need um, credential assessment. We can assessment in, we can assess it in-house. Um, however, if you are not agree with our assessment or if your admission is denied, um, you are welcome to get the, you know, credential assessment services and reapply again if you think that uh, what we assess doesn't seem like what you think it would be. Great, thank you. Uh, we're still getting a couple of different questions here. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you just explain the difference between certifications and like uh, grad certs and degrees uh, and diplomas? I know that it's fairly high level and there's a lot of detail there, but maybe you can just do your best to explain some of the key differences. Okay, I'll take that tally. Um, so we've got a bunch. So you've got um, certificates, which is a one year program, uh, which means two 15 week terms normally. Um, they can be career programs like personal support worker or say dental assisting for a couple of examples, or they can be prep programs like pre-health science is a very popular one or general arts and science or pre-media, um, public safety fundamentals, human service fundamentals. Um, okay, I'll stop there. So that's their one year. Uh, after those, um, people tend to move forward to the next program. So pre-health is gonna give you the post-secondary experience that you'll need to make your application stronger for a health program. So then you've got a diploma. A diploma is two years. Um, most popular ones that I can think of are our business diplomas in accounting, HR, and so forth. Um, the next level is gonna be an advanced diploma, which is a three-year diploma, which can usually be built upon a two-year diploma. So lots of tiers here, lots of building. Um, and then after the three-year advanced diploma, we have our four-year honors degrees. And uh, last count, we had 11 or 13, maybe tell if you know offhand, but um, we've got a few that we offer. Um, and that's, that's kind of to that point. After that, now we have graduate certificates. And graduate certificates are usually one year as well, just like a certificate is. But a graduate certificate has higher expectations for admission where you might need a previously completed diploma or a degree to gain entrance. And sometimes there's minimum GPAs. So it's usually something that is taken to add on to previous, previously completed degrees. Um, I like them, especially for internationally trained individuals who are applying that come here with credentials from a different country. It gives uh, Canadian education. And a lot of times there's a co-op involved, which can give you Canadian work experience as well, which really kind of checks off a couple of really important boxes to make employers a little more comfortable. Great, thanks so much, Jason. Uh, getting a question here, uh, when is the very last day to apply and when does the wait list start? So um, if you are applying for fall 2022, this coming next fall, um, we encourage you to apply before February 1st because um, numbers of programs may be closed at the time, especially competitive programs. Um, after that, then it's first come first serve. Um, however, if you are, the, the deadline is kind of, and after that deadline is kind of varies, depends on, we will still keep accepting application up until we fill the program. So that, and to carry on to that, if you're looking at January right now, if it says it's open, it's first come first serve, which means I can almost say that if you apply with all of the prerequisites, you'll get in, but I can't say that for hundred percent. But right now it's, it's open until filled or usually the fifth day of class for the most programs. Great, thanks guys. Uh, another question here on study permits and refugee status, just generally. Uh, okay, you wanna go for a towel or you want me to? I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. <laughs> so with the refugee, um, the reason being is that um, 
it's it's complicated. Um, so general rule of thumb is that with the refugee, um, there's two types. There's one called refugee claimant and refugee conventional. So usually you would go through refugee claimant first, which is typically you are claim you are claiming that you are a refugee, which means that you are not considered a domestic applicant. You will be applying and, and paying um, fees for international um, students. However, if you have already have your hearing and your immigration documents show that you are um, a refugee claim, um, refugee conventional, it means that you'll be applying as a domestic student paying domestic fee. Um, and when you apply, you would need to send in your application confirming that you are a refugee conventional. That's kind of general in, in that aspect. Right. And anything, any application with refugee in the title, uh, study permit is needed. The, when you become a permanent resident, that's when a study permit won't be required anymore. Okay, thanks to the both of you. Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions. I do have one more here, and then, uh, and then if there are no other questions, then maybe we'll wrap the session up a little bit early. Uh, can, you just, can you just explain some of the key differences between PLAR and credit transfer and like advanced standing? I know that we touched on it a little bit, but. Sure, yeah, it's, I can just make it black and white. PLAR is based on previous work experience, maybe some volunteer experience, um, not academics. The academic side, if you've completed coursework elsewhere, then that's going to be external credit. If it's at Fanshawe, it's internal credit. And advanced standing is when you're thinking that you've done more than a term's worth of equivalency. It's all based on academics. So credit transfer is academics. PLAR is past experience, not academics. Great. Okay, well, I don't think that we're getting any more questions coming in. So I think I'm fine to wrap this session up a little bit early. Just wanted to say thank you to everybody that joined this session. We really appreciate you attending Fanshawe's virtual open house. Uh, I also just want to thank Jason, Tal, and Melissa again for all of your insightful knowledge. Really appreciate it and uh, got some really great questions coming through. Uh, and just a quick reminder that if you have any more information on this topic specifically, uh, then you can email these guys at advising at fanshawc.ca. And if you have any more general questions, then you can just uh, send an email to myfuture at fanshawc.ca. Uh, both of those emails are in the chat if you want to take a look there. You can also book an appointment with a recruiter at fanshawc.ca slash connect, which you see on the screen. The other thing that I wanted to quickly mention before we hop off is that Fanshawe does have a win free tuition for a year contest, which is open to Canadian students. Uh, so that's at choose.fanshawc.ca. Again, that link is in the chat as well. So if you feel like maybe trying to win some free money, uh, that would be a really good place to start. So thank you again to our hosts. Uh, and thank you again to all of you attendees for your wonderful questions. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, wherever you are. Thanks, Connor. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. -bye.